inside some lanes in Las Cruces, New Mexico for the finals of the PWBA Las Cruces, New Mexico Open. Hello everyone, I'm Jan Schmidt and thanks for joining us for PWBA's 21st event of the season. If you've been watching, you'll know tonight's five finalists as they've combined to make 50 telecasts this year. That's capturing nearly half of the spots available. So let's meet them once again. Qualifying fifth, four-time bowler of the year, Wendy McPherson. In the number four position, making her 13th telecast this season, reigning rookie of the year, Cara Honeychurch. Qualifying third, the leader in all categories for 2001, Carolyn Doran Ballard. In the number two position, seeking her first career title, rookie Kelly Kulik. And in the top spot, going for her eighth career victory, Dee Dee Davidson. Working with me again, Kathy Doran Lizzie. And Kathy, let's get right to the top seed, Dee Dee Davidson. She's been having a roller coaster year. Well, last year was a great year for Dee Dee, winning two titles, becoming the fourth woman to capture the Triple Crown. This year, very inconsistent and very disappointed in her performance. She said to me during the week, I just want to have more fun while I bowl. Fun was exactly what she had, never dropping lower than fourth and taking command of this tournament after the first round of match play, never looking back. Well, another lady having some fun this week and all year would be our number two seed, Kelly Kulik. An awesome rookie season, but she hasn't met her goals yet. Well, Kelly dreamed of making five TV shows this year, and tonight we're seeing her for the seventh time, but no title. Is she disappointed? Absolutely. But Kelly has learned to focus on the process and not so much the outcome. Eventually, this rookie will definitely be victorious. Well, our number three seed, Carolyn Dorn Ballard, I think victorious is her middle name. And Kathy, what else can we say about her? Absolutely nothing, Jan, so let's move along. Well, there must be something we can say. Does 17 mean anything to you? Well, Carolyn Doran Ballard has become a household name on the PWBA Tour. Last week, breaking the record for most TV appearances in one season, continuing that streak tonight with 17 shows. But that isn't enough for Carolyn, as usual. With a win tonight, she can tie the most pro titles in one season with seven. If I know Carolyn, she'll probably wind up doing that, too. Well, I bet she's ready to go, and so are we. She'll be joined by Honey Church and McPherson. And they're ready for some high fives, and Carolyn Doran Ballard will be the one starting this match. Kathy, she wants to do it all, doesn't she? Absolutely. But who, do who doesn't, right? You'd like to do it all, right? Of course. I plan on it. I think when the day comes when you don't want to do it, it's time to go home, have a couple kids. Definitely not the opening shot she wanted. Did you get a chance to watch them in practice as Car Honey Church steps up? Kathy, did you get any look at all? I really didn't, unfortunately. But maybe Carolyn's getting those shots out of the way early, because normally those things haunt her later on in the game. It's OK. We didn't want to see that seven pin stand. So in the pocket, though, and that was one of Cara's things all week trying to carry out the seven pin. Yeah, she didn't have very good carry. Mostly on Wednesday, she wasn't sure if she should change her line or just stick it out. She chose to stick it out, which is the smart thing to do. Like we've been saying all year on the sport condition, nine spare is a good frame when the conditions are very tough. This week they were. 209 average for Cara. During this week, and just hangs on to cover that spare. Meanwhile, you saw Carolyn take two out of the three on that. 2-4-10, important to get the wood. And Wendy McPherson, our reigning bowler of the year. Bowler of the decade, in fact. Millionaire. Shall we go on? She's already done it all. Oh, these girls, I'll tell you. A little bit light. Wendy said this week, it was very important to be crisp with your shot making. And it was true. The conditioner was a lot longer. We went 40 feet this week. We have 22 feet of guardian, which tends to make the balls roll different. And she was absolutely right. You had to be on your game this week. Great yeah. shot by Karen. Yeah, came back strong. Wendy qualifying fifth with the 204 average. That was actually the eighth highest average this week. But because she won 17 matches and tied one, she was able to make the show. Bonus pins are very important. 
case you aren't familiar with our format, after a cut, 18 games of qualifying, then they cut to the top 24. 24 games of head-to-head -head match play, 30 bonus pins for every win, 15 pins apiece for a tie. Honey Church and McPherson in the lead. Dorn Baylor trailing by 11 because of that split in the first frame. And 13th TV appearance for Cara. Kathy, do you realize that prior to last year, 13 TV appearances would have been a record for a season before Wendy came up with 15 last year. These ladies are doing the remarkable thing in bowling. I, I don't even know if they understand what they're doing. I remember back in 94, Anne-Marie Dugan made 11 out of 22. That was unheard of. Now you have five, six girls doing it every week. Well, these three ladies, 39 appearances between the three of them so far this year. And big break there for Wendy McPherson, knocking out the 10. Power with some double wood. Picks it up, no problem. Good spare shooter. And Wendy again on a single pin spare. Covers it up, and after a short break, the PWBA will head to Laughlin, Nevada for the 2001 Women's U.S. Open Bowling Championship presented by Riverside Resort. It runs November 30th through December 9th. We hope you plan to come out and vacation there while watching women compete for their largest purse in history. And scratch women bowlers, it's a must bowl. Stay with us. We'll have more details later in the show. Look at the score right now. McPherson in the lead by one pin. Tied with Carolyn Dorn Ballard, actually both in the lead over Cara Honeychurch. While we were away, the carry monkey score on the back of Honeychurch and McPherson. Cara Honeychurch leaving two seven pins. A messenger couldn't even knock it out in the sixth. Wendy McPherson, solid eight and a ten pin. Carolyn Dorn Ballard, animals don't like her. No monkey on her back. She's been perfect since that first frame. So she leads by 33 pins. Karen will be stepping up in the eighth frame with six consecutive strikes, trying to make it seven in a row. Some of them might, it doesn't seem to matter. Her carry, phenomenal right now. And she's probably gotten a little looser since the first frame, maybe a little tight to start. Now, Cara Honeychurch decided she was tired of not carrying, made a switch, Kathy. She switched balls in the seventh frame and buried it. Actually carried one. And that's what we saw earlier, and it didn't kick out the seven, so a good ball change for Cara Honeychurch. Wendy McPherson doubled in the sixth and seventh after five straight nine counts. A stone nine, a stone eight. But it looks like they've all found the secret to carry now as we're in the eighth frame, but Carolyn Dorn Ballard continues to lead by 33 pins. Carolyn Doran Ballard actually made some picks on some football games a couple of weeks ago. She became the, she was victorious. It was in Pittsburgh. That was actually the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Wendy was also involved in those picks and Carolyn Doran Ballard showed us, showed us that she's an athlete and follows sports all the way around. Beat those sports writers out in those picks. That was a little bit of a, an arid shot on Carolyn's part, leaving a hit pin spare. But that was very common all week. Another great shot by Cara. Carolyn a little too aggressive at the release. He didn't have a lot of room to throw it to the right, and there she proved it. Not a very good shot, but spareable. She'll need to convert this. 
She still has a possible 255 game going here. So that's very, really important to stay on top. Very important, and I gotta tell you, if you're leaving a head pin spare, it's obviously not an easy spare to make, or else you wouldn't have left it. That's right. There you see, 255 possible, as I mentioned, for Carolyn Doran Ballard, 236 for Honey Church, and a possible 246 for McPherson. Sparing very crucial this week. The scores were low, the cut was low. If you could find a way just to get to the pocket and save yourself with spares, you would have made the cut very easily this week. So both ladies taking a little time here, a little bit of feeling grip problems, drying their hands. Carolyn working with some tape or something with a grip in her bowling ball and Wendy drying her hand off a little more. 138, look at that, a low game this week. So you could get in a lot of trouble if you missed the spares or left a lot of splits, obviously. She obviously didn't do that too often. She qualified fifth, came back from that low game. Carolyn Dorn Ballard now up in the 10th frame. She can close this match out. Good shot, leaves a four pin. A little high, but spareable. So she'll need to spare this up to secure this match. That being Carolyn Dorn Ballard, when McPherson spares up in the ninth. So the best Wendy McPherson could shoot would be 225. Car Honey Church could still shoot 236, so a spare here and three pins. We'll lock it up for Carolyn Dorn Ballard. No problem. Interesting note on Cara. These actually very, well, she wants to strike up, but really you you have to figure Carolyn will get three pins, but Cara talked about the difficulty she's been having with her timing. It was an interesting comment she made about because you bowl so many games out here, if one little thing goes wrong, it, it gets embedded in your memory, your muscle memory, very quickly. It's very hard to get rid of bad habits when all you're doing is constantly bowling. These ladies make the cut every week. They're bowling 60, 70 games a week plus practice. Sometimes you need a break in order to get rid of your bad habit. You don't have time for a break. So she needs three pins, and she has plenty there. Carolyn Doran Ballard will advance, but first when we come back, a glimpse of future WIBC Hall of Famers. For our final score match one, Carolyn Doran Ballard 243 to Honey Church's 213, and McPherson's 214. So Doran Ballard will continue to face rookie Kelly Kulik right after this. An incident in 1830 led to the naming of Las Cruces. A caravan of travelers was ambushed. The graves were marked and crosses. A subsequent, travel subsequent travelers referred to the site as La Placita de Las Cruces, the place of the crosses. Crosses were laid on the grave site, and that's how Las Cruces received its name. Kelly Kulik now up in the semifinal match. Beautiful opening shot. Exactly. I tell you what, we've said it every week she's been on the show, but this lady does not look like a rookie. Well, she just has an awesome physical ability. Very athletic, very strong young lady, and it shows. And yet she's so smooth. Carolyn Doran Ballard off of a very good opening match, 243. You know, now they showed the side view of her there for a minute, and to me it looked like her feet were very fast. And that could be. She needs to get it just a little bit more to the right earlier. Jumps and goes a little high. Or Bad break gets a split. Her feet getting faster. One of the things she talked about, she had trouble slowing down this week. Yes. Oh. Gave that one a run. On Monday, she was nice and slow. She could get the ball into a roll. She bowled great. She said it's, when Tuesday came and Wednesday morning, she couldn't slow herself down enough. So it's funny, day to day, fatigue, all those little factors come into play. The shot gets a little different. She said that was her weakness, mental focus and concentration. And 
And that was part of it, trying to get herself to slow down, and she just couldn't do it. And her strength, though, was changing lines. So if the lanes are going to start to break down a little bit, I wouldn't be surprised if she moved quick. As usual, comes back with a great shot to follow up that open frame. Don't forget she started that first game with an open frame also, that 243 game. And that just set her off, didn't it? It sure did. You should know something about setting off, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. You've probably done it once or twice in your lifetime. Maybe just once or twice. I think I could remember a time here. Kelly Kulik starting with a strike here and follows with another. She gave us advice about those considering coming out on tour. You know, there's so many things I could say, you know, to give advice. But most importantly, just to be open-minded, determined, know that you really want to do it and you want to try and just to come out because it's a great experience and you have fun no matter what happens but most importantly just to come out and try because you really have to try before you know what's going to happen and she's definitely trying and she likes what's happening seventh tv appearance in a rookie season car honey church last year with nine tv appearances in a rookie season light so neither player will be able to shoot that 300 tonight and collect that travel lodge hotel's fifty thousand dollar bonus for a perfect game maybe maybe in the championship match we see kelly's tv appearances i'm sorry everyone's tv appearances carolyn 17 cara 13 wendy 9 kelly 7 dd4 i mean unbelievable those are the 50 I mentioned at the top of the show, and these That's ladies, a hefty 50. Yeah, it sure is. They're, they're comfortable on TV, or should be by now. I think the audience is getting comfortable watching them every week. All even right now. Carolyn Doran Ballard has been happy with her TV performance. You know, at least this swing. She's done very well while she's won just the one title this swing, she averaged 211.9 for TV during this entire swing at the low game of 182. That's pretty good. That's exceptionally good. She did say though last week on the show she should have adjusted to the carry down a little quicker, but she felt overall she bowled very well. But as we know, I hate to say it, but she does always leave that bed at 710. I, I know, oh. don't look at me oh. like that. I shouldn't have said it, but I had to. Oh, my. Okay, cover that seven pin. And you better get all ten of these, Carolyn. Carolyn would like to say hi to Dell Sr., her father-in-law, and Frances, and her sympathies go out to Carol Hazlitt and family for the loss of her mother. So we're sorry about that. Carolyn trails now by 20 pins. Steps up in the fourth frame. She's working on a spare. Struck last time on this lane. Oh, that was a great shot. That was beautiful. That was crisp. Exactly what Wendy said. We had to be very crisp this week. The tougher the conditions are, the better, the more on top of your game you better be, or else. Kelly talked about her advice to young players coming out. She also said that it was college bowling that prepared her for this, for tour life. And that's where you should be if you're in college. And you bowl, hey, get involved in the bowling program. If you have the opportunity, you might as well do it. It's a smart move. Well, we have the Brunswick Women's World Open and the shootout coming up. The top eight will make the shootout. As you can see, Kelly Kulik right now in ninth position. She'll finish either first, second, or third tonight, so she'll either remain in ninth or she can move up to eighth position if she finishes second or better. With one event left, Brunswick Women's World Open, so it's going to be a tight race, those top eight positions. The claws are going to be out for those top eight positions. Oh, oh my God. God. Ouch, that one hurts. Boy, I'll tell you, she looks flawless out there so far. Beautiful style, gets it off her hand, just crisp, clean. Gets it out to the right, and you can see how it boomerangs back. Stone nine. Great shot. So 
So she will attempt to shoot the spare and keep it clean. So right now we are all even in the semifinal match of the Las Cruces New Mexico Open. We'll be back with you in just a moment. And this lady, Carolyn Doran Ballard, was nominated for that individual sportswoman of the year. She did not win, but in our eyes, she probably should have or was equally as good as many of the other women who were nominated for that category. Oh, oh God, no. that's a <laughs> You're lucky it was not a 7-10. That was a nice shot off her hand. You see both the 7 and the 10 getting ready to go, but the 10 still wobbling. Easy spare for Carolyn. Kelly Kulik will now be in the lead by 20 because Carolyn did not strike. We were all even while we were away, both players alternating with spares and strikes. I may mention that Carolyn Animals maybe didn't like her earlier, but I, I don't know, a spider was crawling at her in the sixth frame when she struck her. Is that a, considered an animal? Nah, I guess not. I would have squashed it. <laughs> Tournament director Wyatt Slaughter had to go out on the approach and take a spider off while we were gone. With my opponent's shoe, of course. <laughs> 63 TV appearances, of course, 17 of them this season. 214 average. That's a great TV average. Carolyn having no problem striking on lane 25. Four straight strikes this match and no strikes for her on lane 26 this match. Meanwhile, Kelly Kulik, Kulik is striking every time on lane 26. And using every inch of 26. Not a very good match play, 13 and 11, which means this lady bowled some outstanding games. If that pin did not go down, Kelly Kulik was walking down and knocking it down, I believe. Same shot as before. Really getting it out to the right. Has such a nice shot to the pocket. Almost leaves a stone nine. She's like that, yes. Three times. You better be down. And again, lane 26. She's only had one strike on lane 25. It was the first frame. Taking a deep breath there, you see, before she starts. Definitely, definitely not her favorite lane. Six, seven, ten. Here you see, she didn't quite get it out as far as she's been. And once you don't, it catches early, and that's the result. Although this is sparable. She finished second. The WIBC Queens back in May, too, none other than Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Ballard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this match right here. Kelly Kulik's done very well in the major. She was second in the U.S. Open also mm -hmm. to Tanil Grijalva. So Carolyn Dorn Ballard just took the lead while sitting on the bench. That's assuming she continues to strike here. She's working on a strike in the eighth and has to find out a, a way to strike just one time on lane 26. She doesn't look it, but she's nervous. Come on, Bob. Come on. Oh, oh, my God. You have got to be kidding me. Same thing we've seen several times. Wendy McPherson, Kelly Kulik, solid nine. But this one, she did get in a little. She, too, didn't get it out to the right as far as she's been. Still a great shot. Could have went for any of the girls. A little disappointed there. But it held. So she might have been a little lucky just leaving the nine pin. Spares it up, and we will have a four pin match. Kellendor and Ballard will trail by four pins, and she'll finish first. So basically, Kelly Kulik will have to match what Carolyn does. Carolyn defeated Kelly earlier in the week. 
Kelly not getting any on that split. She probably didn't mean to throw it in the gutter, obviously. Oh, I'm sure she didn't. As you've seen week to week, the shows are always coming down to the last frame, so wood is important on splits. Carolyn Doran Ballard's career record on TV against Kelly Kulik, 3-0. and oh. That was nice. She got one. If she doubles here, she'll force Kelly Kulik to double. And then we'll be looking at pin count. Carolyn talked about that she bowled well this week, but not the best that she's ever bowled. Again, the nerves thing, an issue with her all week. She said a lot of that is just mental and physical fatigue. And people need to understand also, it's just as mental, mentally and physically grueling to be on top as it is to get there. Big shots. Oh, wow. she gets the big trip of the seven pin. Coming up a little light. This one, she definitely gave room. Threw it a little harder, I believe, coming up a little light. Taps it right out. Look at her leaning over. She wants that out of there. She wants to duke it out with the seven pin if it's done. I think so, and so she remains perfect on lane 25 this match. She strikes here. It'll be a score of 198. Kelly Kulik would need two strikes and seven pins. Yeah, no doubt about that one. Huge, huge tenth frame for Kelly. Big finish, so the rookie now has the weight on her shoulders and will have to finish this match. It was her choice who would start and who would finish last. Two strikes and seven pins is what she needs. And she is on her better lane. She definitely trusted it. Not the shot she wanted to have happen, so Carolyn Doran Ballard hangs on to win the semifinal. We'll return with info on entering the U.S. Open and a recap of tonight's matches. The 2001 Women's U.S. Open Bowling Championship, presented and hosted by Don Laughlin's Riverside Resort Hotel and Casino in Laughlin, Nevada, will begin with Pro-Ams November 30th and December 1st. U.S. Open competition begins December 2nd and concludes with a live broadcast on ESPN Sunday, December 9th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, immediately following the men's U.S. Open final. It's $300,000 up for grabs. For tournament entry info, contact the PWBA at 815-332-5756 or visit pwba.com. And there's still time to enter the Pro-Ams. Call Riverside at 800-227-3849 or visit riversideresort.com. So far tonight in match one, Carolyn Doran Ballard managed to string seven strikes to better Honey Church and McPherson, 243 to 213 and 214. In match two, Carolyn Doran Ballard showed why she's ranked number one, striking out in the 10th to defeat Kulik, 198 to 192. Coming up next, Carolyn Doran Ballard challenges top seed Dee Dee Davidson for the Las Cruces New Mexico Open title. During Las Cruces, New Mexico's colorful history, Sheriff Pat Garrett caught and tried the region's notorious outlaw, Billy the Kid. And we're inside Sun Lanes in Las Cruces, New Mexico for the championship round of the Las Cruces, New Mexico Open. Carolyn Doran Ballard and Dee Dee Davidson will duke it out. They'd both like to take a couple prisoners here. Carolyn Doran Ballard successfully climbing the ladder, exact opposite of what we saw in Fort Worth, Kathy, when Dee Dee climbed the ladder to face Carolyn. Carolyn, of course, being victorious there. As the top seed position has been most of this season. Oh, and as Three she started. In a row. Yeah, amazing. But it turns out for the better, so I wouldn't think she plans it that way. I would hope not. No. 
as we're saying, maybe we're seeing a little transition. The lanes may be breaking down. Didn't look like too bad of a shot, but obviously she kept it in a little. Left the big four, but she'll get the two. Very important. Okay, so she's got the first frame out of her system. Done. She just chooses to bowl nine frames. Dee Dee Davidson, 34 years old, on tour, 17 years. Our latest triple crown winner. Dee Dee, always tough in the majors. Out of seven titles, three of them majors. That's pretty impressive. Every year, a factor in every major. Oh, and that was a really bad break. And she did the opposite, came up a little light. Ball never looked like it really finished. You can see it made a late charge to the pocket. Leaves a light 7-9. Normally you see that high in the pocket. She get one. Taking aim at her seven pin, probably just trying to get comfortable shooting those corner pins. And right now, just a one pin match. Davidson, I believe, calling for a re-rack on lane 25, not liking what she sees, it would appear. As I see it cycle, and some of the other ladies that did not make the show, Kim Adler was the defending champ here. She just missed out. Carol Giannotti Block from Australia, she had the fifth highest average, but only an 11 and 13 match play record. And our number 11 qualifier, Anne Marie Dugan, would love for you to join her at her website, bowlingballmall.com. And Leanne Barrett sitting right next to us, keeping score. 13. Both players off an open frame. Light again. It's 3-9 this time. That ball looks like it's really going long for Dee Dee. And not making the move until too far down the lane. That's why she keeps coming up light. She could either go to a stronger ball and stay where she's at, or move a little right and soften up on her speed. Steedy does have a lot of power. Taking that spare. <laughs> I'm being pretty relaxed right, right now in the second frame as Carolyn Doran Ballard looking pretty intense right now. As she normally does during a show. Well, for her, is there any other way? No, mm -hmm. I suppose not. <laughs> She's definitely not the smiley face on the balloon we see, you know? At least not during competition. No. Eighth in career earnings, you see that? $767,000. Ways oh. to go to get up and oh my gosh. That was a strong messenger if I ever seen. Well here you see she comes up a little light but obviously threw it really, really crisp. Gets the seven, not the ten. I think the pin in the channel deflected that messenger away from the 10 pin. Once again, switching to the plastic ball to shoot cross lane at the spot. We talked about her intensity. We've also talked about her nerves, but she told you, Kathy, earlier how she feels with those nerves. Well, actually, whether I'm bowling good or bad, I'm always nervous. I think because I put a little too much pressure on myself, and I expect a lot on myself, and when I don't see results, I get a little disappointed. But actually, it could be a little reverse now. I feel as if when I bowl bad, now everybody notices. It's, it's not, oh, well, Carolyn's just bowling good. It's like, oh, my God, she's bowling bad. So I don't know if it's just the end of the swing, but I just think I'm putting a little too much pressure on myself, and I bowled a little nervous this week, didn't make as many good shots as I have been, and I paid for it. So I'm, I'm a little lucky to be here, but darn glad to be here. There's her 7-10. She left the 10, now she left the 7. Okay. I'm, out of, I'm out of danger. You're off the hook. <laughs> There you see, she leads the PWB in earnings. She leads in average, she leads in points, she leads in telecast, she leads in titles. Really everything this season. Just as Wendy McPherson has done several years mm -hmm. out of the past four years. Past five years, really, for Wendy, four of the last five. Now those last two shots being great shots. Just lack of carry my opinion, I probably wouldn't change anything. Talk about Dee Dee being a strong player, throws the ball hard. She's one of the few still throwing 16-pound equipment out here on tour. God bless him. And she said she has trouble sometimes getting it because the truck doesn't carry around so much 16-pound equipment anymore. All the ladies now throwing 15. Dee 
Didi, as we said, is a very powerful player, has a lot of hand action. And that ball definitely rolled better, made a move, came up a little high, though, left the 4 7. Easy spare. Didi also switching for plastic ball to shooter spares. She definitely made an adjustment, though. She talked about she's been th actually drilling some 15-pound equipment because of not being able to get the 16. Kathy, do you throw 15? Absolutely. Man, it's, it's not really needed with the balls today, the, the no, heavier weight. No, not at all. I threw 16 when I first went away to college back in 88. I don't know how I did it then. I don't know either. You're only about 98 pounds, I think. <laughs> Didi high again, and she's, she's asking for some help there. Come on, keep falling. Once again, she made the adjustment because now she's going a little high. She went right through the heart of the head pin, gets a break and only leaves the 2-4, which is a lot easier to make than what she had before the other two pins fell. So she covers it up and Carolyn Doran Ballard now in the lead. We'll take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll name a champion. coming up and she pushed it back so meanwhile while she's regrouping we'll take a look at the other finishers again Maxine Nabel in Australia four consecutive match play finals for her and Kelly Rapp an up-and-coming talent finishing up in 20th place 21st Laura Lee Daniel having her best season ever and 24th a veteran Team USA member Janet Pazinski from Cheektowaga New York big shot here in the ninth frame Carolyn Dorn Ballard carries the strike to at least give herself an opportunity. The best score she could post if she would strike out in the 10th would be 206. Dee Davidson can still shoot 224, so she leads by 18 pins based on their maximum score. Carolyn had the highest TV pair average also, 222. Dee with 211. Carry again a good shot. Almost left the six seven. Almost. So we know twenty six is definitely hooking. Really nice shot off her hand. Just jumped a little bit there at the end. You can see the seven pin just going down. Quite a little bit of a break there just by leaving the six pin easy spare for Dee. So on a spare again, the lead flip flops because Carolyn Doran Ballard has that strike up in the ninth frame. Dee Dee told us her spare shooting was great this week. She also changed to five steps last week. Very impressive for girls to be able to do that in the middle of a swing. You really have to have trust in yourself and in your game. You really have to know your game in order to, number one, do that, and number two, know to do it. So, very important. That's a good point for people at home, too, to make those changes. Carolyn Doran Ballard looking down. She doesn't want to see what's going to happen here. She will have an opportunity to step up and win her seventh tournament of the year. Meanwhile, Dee Dee Davidson looking for her first victory this season. She wants it bad. She sure does. She can strike out here for a score of 204. Carolyn Dorn Ballard can still strike out for 206. So a big, big shot coming up here on her second shot in the 10th frame. This is where those pins on splits come into play. One, two pin games always comes down to the always comes down to the 10th frame. Doesn't matter how the game starts, it's always a nail biter every week. Mental toughness. That's what you'll see here. Tough shot for Dee Dee. She just said too bad shot. She knew it. She'll need to spare it up. And she can force Carolyn Doran Ballard to strike. You can see she got it out to the left. A little too quick. Wasn't going to recover. She knew it too. As soon as she turned around, she said bad shot. Dee Dee 
covers it up. Carolyn Dorn Ballard will need the first strike, strike nine spare, to win this title. And let's just point out that she has not struck on lane 26 in two games. She did night strike on that on that lane the last game, and she hasn't struck yet on this lane this game. And she will have to find a way to throw one strike, nine spare, to break the PWBA record of six titles in a season held by Lisa Wagner in 88, and to tie the all-time pro record of seven titles in a season held by Patty Costello in 76. Great shot. It was great off her hand, but we said before, even for both players, 26 started to hook. And you can see right there, great off her hand, but jumped right there at the end. She knew it. She's begging for a trip four, but Dee Dee Davidson takes her first title of the year. We'll be back with more. Don't go away. Title number eight, 194 to 186, and collects trophy and check from Joe Caracciolo and Gloria Roberts of Sun Lanes. Tune in again next Monday night, an hour later at 9 p.m. Eastern, as Cara Honeychurch goes for a three-peat at the Brunswick Women's World Open from Suncoast Bowling Center in Las Vegas. For Kathy Dore and Lizzie, I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.